what overall, like what conditions can improve as a whole for uh, utilizing hyperbaric oxygen therapy? So you have, um, let's divide them, um, you know, even by history. So when you think about how hyperbaric uh, oxygen therapy started, we're talking about, first of all, diving accidents. That's mm -hmm. how it all started. People got the bends. People still get the bends right. if uh, you do some um, mistakes on your diving. Um, so that's the first and foremost use for that. Then uh, when we talk about therapy for chronic conditions, you have majorly uh, non-healing wounds. So people who have diabetic wounds or mm. other issues uh, in their periphery wounds, um, it's really inducing significant healing of those wounds. Also on that, uh, one of the biggest indications is radiation injury. So we're talking about people who receive radiotherapy for different cancers, um, can have skin issues or uh, gastrointestinal, urological issues, even cognitive issues because of radiotherapy. So hyperbaric oxygen therapy is actually the only therapy for radionecrosis mm -hmm. or radiation injury. Um, and then we have the whole neurological indications. So, and that's kind of what our group has led over the past two decades in research. So like you mentioned, traumatic brain injury, people can have a severe traumatic brain injury, um, you know, leading to in, uh, injuries that require surgery, but also people can suffer from mild traumatic brain injury and then develop post-concussion syndrome, which is emotional symptoms, cognitive symptoms, headaches, and a lot of different symptoms uh, that bother people. So we know that post-concussion syndrome can significantly benefit from hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So that's um, TBI-wise. And then the second neurological indication I would like to mention is stroke. People suffer from different types of strokes, whether it's um, hemorrhagic strokes or ischemic strokes. Um, so people get the acute intervention yeah. in, uh, in the hospital, um, leading to significant improvement, leading to rehabilitation, but still people remain very, very disabled now on different uh, spectrum of injuries. And again, uh, we've led significant research showing that we can improve both neurological symptoms such as motor improvements as well as cognitive improvements. What people um, a lot of times forget that more than 50% of stroke survivors suffer from cognitive issues, whether it's memory, attention, processing speed. So more than 50% of them suffer from that. And we know we are able to improve that and again, bring them back to work and improve quality of life. So those two main indications, again, uh, stroke and TBI. Next, we've led uh, research in different pain syndromes. So central pain syndromes, when our brain causes us to think that we have different pain or causes us to process touch and feeling as they're painful. One of the classic indications is that um, fibromyalgia. Again, people that feel pain um, along with sleep issues, emotional um, symptoms, again, due to a neurological issue. The problem there is in the brain. We already know that. Um, so again, we led a lot of research in fibromyalgia and saw that this can be significantly improved. That led us to a whole um, branch of trauma-induced brain injury, or what we can call PTSD, eventually post-traumatic stress uh, disorder. We're now leading uh, the second randomized Cl uh, clinical trial, um, which the result will soon be published. But again, we're talking about brain injury that results from a traumatic event. And it doesn't have to be military related, as we all know, unfortunately, it can be motor vehicle accident, but it can also, also be, um, you know, emotional assault or sexual abuse um, that unfortunately are so common and cause people to suffer from significant injury and stress for the rest of their lives. So again, the right uh, patient that we are able to help with, we do assessments for, and if we are able to help, again, 
um, PTSD is significantly can be significantly improved with HBOT. Um, the next indication I would um, mention is what we're doing with aging. So back in 2015, we led on healthy aging or normal aging. We took patients um, over the age of 64, which didn't have a significant, um, uh, you know, event. They did not have TBI or a stroke or a significant uh, cancer or cardiac issue. They were just people over the age of 64, pretty healthy. And we wanted to see what we were able to produce or induce with hyperbaric oxygen therapy, a specific novel um, regime uh, protocol. And we found we are able to improve the aging process. We are able to improve cognitive function as well as physical function along with actual aging biomarkers. So we're actually changing the way we age with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Um, so I think those are the main indications we covered, diving through uh, wounds, radiation, necrosis, and the new field that we have for the past couple of decades for neurological indications. But what's unifying everything here, what we're talking about is injuries that are related to hypoxia or low level of oxygen, different organs that suffer from lack of blood and lack of ox oxygen that causes a wound. And this is what we do with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. We heal wounds that do not have enough oxygen and blood. It happens with the trauma, whether it's traumatic or stress-related. It happens with stroke, but it also happens, like I said, in aging. One, while we age, different vessels in our brain, in our kidneys, in our heart, are being occluded and we have tiny wounds in all of our organs. Mm -hmm. So again, the goal of hyperbaric oxygen therapy is to heal wounds, whether they're in your brain or in your heart. Yeah, yeah, really exciting stuff. And at the cellular level, we know the oxygen is helping improve mitochondrial energy production, which allows the cell to function better and then also helps the cell to detox more effectively as well and just handle overall oxidative stress that it may be encountering. And that's, you know, a big part of the mechanism. Mm -hmm.